Just the other day, I made a video about Open Lovable, which is a lovable clone made by Firecrawl. And they did it again with Perplexity, which is an open source clone of Perplexity. In this video, we'll go through how you can install this on your own computer. And then we'll test it to see if it works efficiently, if it's fast, ideally fast. Because a lot of these perplexity clones usually have a scraper behind of them that doesn't really fetch the data as fast as we would like it to. But Firecall has recently launched their V2 and it's 10 times faster at scraping. Uh, th that's why this project even became relevant again, because this is kind of an old project, but with V2, it just mu works much more efficiently. And they've made some changes to the interface that just makes it even cooler. So let's get on with it. The first thing you want to do is head over to Perplexity. I like to just click on this button, grab this link. Now open up your terminal if you're in Mac command space, terminal opened, head over to documents. Inside of your documents folder, just type in git clone and paste in that URL. Now cd into that folder that was just created. So cd for complexity code space dot to open up your IDE. Now that this is open, let's go through the envs. Let me just copy those envs, create a new dot env file place those ems in there and I'll immediately go over to Firecrawl to get their API, open that up, click on dashboard, head over to the API keys page, create a new one. So this will be Firecrawl create key. Now just click to copy that key and paste it in here. You'll also need a grok key, so head over to this link. Click here to create a new API key, Firecrawl 2, submit, grab that, head back to your .env, paste that in there and now we should be fine to run the project. Open up your terminal, type in pnpm i. Since this project does use pnpm, after everything is installed, just pnpm dev and wait for it to open up on port 3000. Okay, it seems like it's already running. Let's test it. So the first thing I want to fetch is something around Claude code. So get me any news about Claude code for the past one week. Okay, it seems like it sent the question. Now it should be crawling. Okay, it sent the question. Now it started retrieving in a really perplexity style, not perplexity, perplexity style. And like I, I love this style, like so clean, everything's so clean. Let's see the actual response and see that if it got the context needed to answer something about cloud code for me. So it seems like it brought it back to me in kind of a list style. And then you could hover this to access whatever it scraped. Let's see if it only scraped this. Okay, very disappointed. Then key takeaways. Yeah, it seems like it, it, they are different uh, Reddit posts and then another one. So it seems like Cloud Code has been unusable for a few weeks, slow, buggy, suddenly for refusing to follow prompts. I haven't gotten these issues saying, but yeah, it brought me a pretty nice result. Let me click on a related topic similar to perplexity where you can do a deep search around that specific topic. So in this case, have any users found a reliable workarounds or settings that restored Cloud Code's performance this week? Let me just click it and see what we get. Okay, it's generating everything. It's interesting that they placed a short answer. So nothing in the past week looks like a silver bullet fix. At the right, you'll see some images. So when you click on that, you'll see that message. It's an email from Claude that they sent to all users talking about a change that they would make a new rate limit. This is, I believe this is like a month old. Uh, and then, yeah, some overall related Claude code images. So obviously the idea with this project isn't to replace perplexity. I, I feel like it's a way to really show off fur crawl and how amazingly fast it is at scraping really anything. But honestly, just because it's an open source project, I feel like it allows more people to join in, contribute and actually make this project a cheaper alternative for perplexity. So in terms of costs for Grok, it was 0.006 cents of a dollar to execute both of these searches. As for Firecall, you can head over to their activity logs page. And in here, you'll see that for both of these reach searches, I wasted up to 31 credits. And you can actually get 500 credits for the free plan. In the past video on Open Lovable, they asked how they could actually deploy this app. So get this running in their own server and have a link for them to research something from their phone inside of their own server. And that's pretty easy. You could just use Vercel for this. I'll do that pretty fast. Head over to Vercel. Uh, you'll be logged inside of your projects. Add new project. 
In here, you would place the repository name for your project, but we don't really have that since we cloned the project initially. So just head back to Ferplexity's repository, click on fork. In here, you can choose a different repository name, but I'll just leave it as Ferplexity. Click on create fork. Soon enough, you'll have your own version of Ferplexity, of which you can head back to Vercel, type in Ferplexity. It might not show up here. So you'll have to click on configure GitHub app, then just authenticate yourself. And once you're logged in to select repository, find Fireplexity in here. Nice. Click on that, hit save. And what you're doing here is just allowing Versal to access that repository. Now that you it has access to it, just click on import. You'll have to fill in some environment variables here, which are the same from the actual project. So you can just copy everything, head back, paste, and it'll find the fields that it had to be inserted in. Just click deploy and wait a few seconds for it to be deployed inside of Versal. So it seems like we got an error here, but we can fix that pretty easily. Just head over to GitHub repository, clone repository, type in the Fireplexity. Okay, clone that. As soon as it's done, uh, yeah, for my own purposes, continue. Let me open that up inside of cursor. I can just grab my .env from the previous project, create a new .env in here, and just always use it this. Now open up my terminal and type in pnpmi. Once everything is installed, probably the pnpm-lock will be updated. Not sure, let's head back to yeah, GitHub desktop and it has been updated. So let's just commit that, click to push origin. Wait a few seconds. Okay, nice. Now I can head back here, click deploy. Okay, yeah, it seems like it was deployed. Let's click to continue to dashboard. Now click on visit and let's test it out. Let me fill it in with who is Leonardo Gregorio. If by any chance it finds me, it would be pretty awesome. I don't have any websites up with my actual name. I guess it's just easier for it to find different people that are called Leonardo Gregorio, but no, it's actually showing a bunch of images from me. Okay, this gets me pretty proud. It's funny how it knows that I'm Brazilian. I don't usually specify that in my social medias. So yeah, test this on your own. Let me know what it found about you online. I was just in recording when I realized that the domain would be exposed. So anyone would be able to basically have a free perplexity clone that uses your tokens. To ensure that doesn't happen, either remove your keys when you're not using it, because then if anyone tries typing anything, they'll get this model for them to fill in their Firecrawl API key. Or you can also just send all the environment variables to the preview branch and just use the preview branch, which gets you access to the Versal authentication feature. You have access to the password protection as well if you're a Versal Pro member. And actually, I'm reading this for the first time. This feature is available only on the Pro plan as part of advanced deployment protection for an additional 150 per month. Okay, just to have a password protection, it might not be worth it. So yeah, just remove your environment variables or you can actually come to this page, remove your variables from the reproduction, send them over to preview, and then the preview will have the authentication from Vercel, which will only allow you to access that page if you're logged inside of Vercel. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you at all, leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'll see you in the next video. Till then.